Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever parts of the world you're in. It's a new week, a brand new week with happiness, hopes and positive vibes. Welcome to Adonai's Kingdom and my name is Awaudi the Messenger. Before we carry on, just let's start with the word of prayer. Hallelujah. Father Lord, we bless you. We honor you. We lift up your name, O Jehovah. Your King of kings, your Lord of lords. We adore you, O Father. As we come before you, Use me as an oracle of your voice, O Jehovah. Yes, touch each and every listener, viewer, from whichever part of the world they are in. Change their lives for the better. Let them, not, let them stop suffering and let them believe in your word. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Take control, Holy Spirit. Use me again as an oracle of your word, of your voice. In Yeshua's mighty name, amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Well, guys, yes, here we are again. Brand new day brand new week and let's jump straight to the word of the most high god uh this time the last time we talked about leadership and integrity whereby samuel was handing over he was handing over to saul king saul to rule the people the children of israel and we saw how Samuel was full of integrity. He asked anyone, is anyone among you whom I have robbed or taken something from him and not returned? And the whole nation said, no, not even one. That's what we said. That's what is called integrity. And that's what the Lord wants us, each and every one of us to have integrity in the highest standards well today we carry on with the book of first samuel chapter number 12 but we are going to verse 8 up to verse 15 and today's title will put it as god's righteousness you see the children of israel had, had rebelled properly proper and i mean on a serious note to the point that god had to remind them where they were coming from and how righteous he is so here let's go let's go let's jump to the word and see what happens uh, in fact from seven it says and now stand and i shall reason with you before the lord that samuel telling the children of Israel concerning all the righteous acts which he did to you and to your forefathers. God keeps on reminding us every single day what is done for us, our forefathers, why you are still alive and things are happen happening supernaturally for you, but you don't notice them. Even though you, or sometimes people tend to notice and uh, they just ignore because they think ah, it's God, God will just be merciful. So let's see how he reminded them of his righteousness. In verse 8, And when Jacob came to Egypt, and your forefathers cried out to the Lord, the Lord sent Moses and Aaron, and they brought, their, they brought your forefathers out of Egypt, and they made, and they made them dwell in this place. 
the promised land. And they forgot the Lord. You see, the Israelites, they forgot the Lord, their God. And he delivered them into the hands of Sisera, the commander of the army of Hazo, Haza, uh, and into the hand of the Philistines, and into the hand of the king of Moab. And they waged war with them. That's verse 9. Verse 10, And they cried out to the Lord, and said, We have sinned, for we have forsaken the Lord, and have served the Baalim and Ashtaroth. Now save us from the hand of your enemies, and we shall serve you. Now they were running back unto the Lord. Okay, so you see from verse 8, God really wanted to restore his children. You see, when you there outside, you forget Adonai, you, you forget Yeshua, you forget about God, he'll hand you over to the enemies. Don't be surprised if things start going bad. That's the enemy taking over your life because you've, you've forgotten God completely and you thought that you can survive by your own. So he hands you and that's what he did here. He did in a verse 9. And they forgot the Lord their God, and he delivered them into the hands of the Sisera, the commander of the army of Hazar, and into the hand of the Philistines, and into the hand of the king of Moab. I mean, they were just being distributed to the enemies all over. And, and it's not different from the Old Testament to the New Testament. The same thing. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He'll never change. If you mess up with him, he'll mess, he'll mess your life completely because his presence will move away from you. What I, I, may, I can advise you, the best thing that you can say, if you are a child of God, the best thing that you can say is to pray like David. You can take anything away from me. But never take the Holy Spirit from me. That's, that's a prayer because the Holy Spirit, he, he controls everything. He guides you in all aspects of prosperity, protection, guidance. He's just there for you. That's why David cried that song. He sang and prayed unto the Lord. He knew the importance. So, Never forget God, because if you forget him, he'll move away. And you're, and when your enemies take over, until you repent, God won't do anything. But he'll still remind you of his righteousness. Okay. Uh, in, let's go to verse 10. And they cried, to the law out to the Lord and said, We have sinned for we have forsaken the Lord and have served the Baalim Ash Taroth and save us from the hands of your enemies. Save us from the hands of our enemies, and we shall serve you. And verse eleven and the Lord sent Jerubal and Bedan and Jephthah and Samuel, and he saved you from the hand of your enemies around about, and you dwelt in safety, and you dwelt in safety. You notice Jerubal here, Jerubal is another name of Gideon. That's where God raised Gideon, and that one is a uh, Jerubal is another name of Gideon and that one usually it's found in a, I think it's in a Judges the book of Judges Judges chapter number 3 Jerubal yeah these guys they were just there and I mean God was God is always there for you Judges chapter number 6, if, you, if we look at Judges 
chapter 6 and verse 32. It says, 6, 3, 2. Yeah. Therefore, on that day he called him Jerubal, saying, Let Baal plead against him, because he has he has thrown down his altar. That was uh, they were talking about Gideon. God was using had sent his servant to rescue Israel. So God is trying to tell the Israelites. It's like Samuel's uh, prophetic paranoma of God's righteous acts. This uh, verse 9, 10, 11, it's just the paranoma of God's prophetic, God's righteous acts. Because you find uh, in Greek it's pass, pass meaning all, and then horama is view. It's like God is showing them a whole view of his righteous acts so that at least his children can come back to him. God doesn't run away from you. We run away from God. We ignore God completely. And we leave. I mean, we ignore Yeshua and we leave him standing at our doorstep looking for things that are not going to help us completely. Okay. Uh, in verse 12, and when they saw that Nahash, the king of Ammon, came upon you, you say to me, No, but a king shall rule over us when the Lord your God was your king. And now behold, the king, the king whom you have chosen, whom you have requested, and behold, the Lord has appointed a king over you. Verse 14, and if you will fear the Lord and serve him and hearken to his voice and you will not rebel against the commandments of the Lord, both you and the king who reign over you will be after the Lord your God. But if you will not hearken to the voice of the Lord, you will rebel, rebel, rebel against the commandments of the Lord and the Lord's hand will be against you and against your fathers. I mean, that's a warning they were being given. If you do anything against the Lord, you become disobedient, his hand will be against you. So if we see in verse 14, they were given a freedom of choice. It's a freedom of choice for your blessing to come. The Lord will never force anything. They wanted a king, he gave them. He'll never force anything on us. It's our free will to choose. Of all God's acts to his children, based upon his covenants, like Abra Abrahamic covenant in the Old and Yeshua's covenant in the New Testament, all of these covenants, God doesn't let us down. He tells, he tells us, do this. If you do this, if you obey me, if you worship me, if you trust in me, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you until the end of the times. So it's up to us to follow and trust him completely. So we see again that in verse 9, they forgot the Lord because he did not. But, yeah, they forgot the Lord, but the Lord did not forget them. So you find Israel is depicted as a God's wife. Usually, God didn't forget about Israel completely. Because God is like the husbandman to Israel. You, and if you want to if you want to prove of that, you, we can see it in uh, Exodus 24, the book of Exodus, chapter number 24 and verse 3, whereby God was giving them commands. It's just like in a wedding where a husband and a wife, 
they are taking vows they trust each other they i mean they follow each other till the end of the times so in exodus chapter 24 and verse 3 moses came and told the people all the words of the lord and all the judgments and all the people answered with one voice and all and said all the words which the lord has said we will do that's a covenant that's why god took them as a wife israel was like a wife and is still a, like, like a wife to god and even you there as long as you are a believer you are like a bride to yeshua and he'll protect you he'll protect you if you follow his words and trust in him on a serious note unfortunately you find for israel they say in everything we will do that was verse 3 the lord has said we will do and then if we jump to exodus chapter number 34 verse 15 to 16 see what these guys did after promising god everything they'll do 15 to 16 it was like lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land they've forgotten about god this is what happens to us every day let's make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land and go whoring like prostituting after their gods and do sacrifice unto their gods and one and one call thee and thou eat of his sacrifice see eating the sacrifice of the idols and thou take of their daughters unto thy sons and their daughters go are uh, whoring or prostituting after their gods and make thy sons go on whoring prostituting after their gods that's how they broke it and that's what's happening today also the covenant with god we are forgetting it we are choosing the ways of the world prostituting whoring after the world changing the calendar making so many days i mean we've got so many holidays in our calendars nowadays but the most important ones we don't even even christians we don't focus on the most important ones which are, which which are in the holy bible the holy days but we focus i mean there are so many days pancake days i don't know what day somebody wakes up and comes up with a day to celebrate and the whole world even christians we are just following let's say yeah, it's so somebody's days it's pets days it's i mean follow the holy one of israel follow his holy days and the lord will be with you he'll bless you but if you follow the days holy days of the world you'll just pick there year after year you are just celebrating those days and you are getting gaining nothing but if you celebrate the holy days of the holy one you'll gain a lot my brothers and sisters out there hallelujah so you find even though you don't want god's way of leadership he is faithful he's a faithful god and if you obey his commands or laws he will be with you so these guys were given a king and god decided to be with them god gave them the, their desires because in psalm 78 daniel says give me the desires of my heart 78 29 to 31 the desires if you pray for the desires of your heart and you are walking with god he will provide it and you'll never lack so it's up to you remember the righteousness of god the righteousness of the holy one of israel and follow those righteousness and his commands and you'll be surprised with what the lord will do for you 
in Yeshua's mighty name. Amen and amen. If you are there, you don't know anything about Christ and you want to be part and parcel of the kingdom of God, say this prayer after me. Father, Holy One, I come before you. I am a sinner. Cleanse me of all my sins. Guide me, teach me, forgive me of my iniquities. I believe that Jesus, Jesus Christ died for my sins on the cross. He shed his blood because of me. On the third day he rose again and he seated on the right hand side of the Father. Oh Lord, you Father. And he'll come again to judge the living and the dead. Father, forgive, accept me in your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you say that prayer, heaven is rejoicing. Everyone is celebrating because you are one and only. I mean, even me, I'm happy for you. Your life will never be the same again. Join a church near you. Get a Bible, a King James Version, and start reading the Bible slowly and slowly. In the church, you'll find Christians who will show you the way and you'll never regret. God bless you, my brother. And Father, I pray for my viewers, each and every one of them. Let them know of your righteousness, the things that you've done to the world ever since it, we came to this world. You've been with them. Open their minds, their hearts. Let them know that you are Yeshua, the Holy One, the one and only true God. Bless each and every one of them. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Guys, see you next time and God bless you. Shalom. Peace.